What's up folks, it's me David and this is the Entertainment Network's Weekly Roundup, a place for you to catch up on the week in entertainment. Now let's kick things off this week with Ant-Man. The Marvel film, which was in development hell for years, finally saw a release last week and according to review aggregate site Metacritic has received generally positive reviews. Thank goodness. The film has been the subject of much concern after fan favourite director Edgar Wright, the man behind such films as Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz and Scott Pilgrim vs The World, left Marvel Studios and the Ant-Man project after working on it for 11 years, quoting creative differences. This led to many assuming that corporate interference was going to ruin the Ant-Man movie in the same way it ruined Spider-Man 3, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and many other films that don't include Spider-Man in the title role. Fortunately, this appears not to be the case. While the film hasn't pleased everyone and certainly has its critics, on the whole, the majority of fans seem to be agreeing that this is a solid superhero movie, myself included. In fact, last week on the Entertainment Network's website, I wrote a review of Ant-Man and assigned it a score of 8.2 out of 10. I'll put a link to my review in the video description if you have any interest in hearing what I have to say. And let's face it, you may not, and that's fine. Despite a reasonable amount of good press, the film's box office performance has been considered subpar for a Marvel Studios film. Opening with a weekend domestic haul of $58 million, Ant-Man was the lowest Marvel debut since Marvel Studios' The Incredible Hulk came out in 2008. But that's not to say that the film flopped. In fact, with international totals factored in, it's already made much of its budget back and it will almost definitely turn a profit. The question is how much profit will it make and will that profit be enough to warrant a sequel that many fans are already crying out for? In keeping with the film finance theme, earlier this week Jurassic World became the third highest grossing film of all time, taking the place previously held by the first Avengers film. Jurassic World has now made over $1.5 billion worldwide and is being outgunned only by the two James Cameron juggernauts Avatar and Titanic. It seems very unlikely that Jurassic World will come close to dethroning either of Cameron's epics, but in this case, third place is still a huge achievement. Jurassic World has had a generally positive reception from fans, however it has polarised some people with the film's critics pointing to its dodgy CGI, illogical plot development and apparent sexist undertones. However, looking at these numbers it seems that Jurassic World has pleased the majority of people and I'd be very surprised if we don't see a sequel fast track very soon. This also continues what's been a fantastic year for Universal. This is the film studio's second film to pass the billion dollar mark so far this year after Furious 7 made over a billion dollars back in April. Cinemas in the United States this week we have Paper Towns, the adaptation of John Green's young adult novel. The last John Green adaptation, 2014's The Fault in Our Stars, was a big box office performer and I'm sure the folks at Fox 2000 will be watching Paper Towns very closely to see if Green's fans can create another success as they just signed a first look deal with the high profile author. Also out this week is boxing feature Southpaw. Hot off the critical acclaim of his last film Nightcrawler, Jake Gyllenhaal takes the lead role here as a successful boxer struck by misfortune who makes it his mission to redeem himself in the eyes of his loved ones. Early reviews have been mixed so far, so it's hard to say whether this film will please anyone except Gyllenhaal's most dedicated fans. Still, if you're a fan of boxing, it may well be worth a go. The only other wide release this week is Adam Sandler's Pixels. Now, I foolishly believe that this could be a return to form for the actor, given that it's going from the director of the first two Harry Potter films. It stars some good actors in the form of Peter Dinklage, Brian Cox and Jane Krakowski, and the trailer generated some impressive buzz when it was released earlier this year. But it seems I was wrong, as early reviews have been almost universally negative, landing the film with a Rotten Tomatoes score of just 19% at the time of filming this video. That's your roundup for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll come back next week for another roundup. I also hope that you'll subscribe to this channel, like the video, and let me know your thoughts on this week's top stories in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm David Craig.